Uh, welcome to our worship today. I hope that you receive also the blessing of the throne while you're worshiping and also edit and plan and design while you're listening to the word. Uh, today's title is The Unprecedented, Never Repeated Blessing and the 25 Answer. It's a little bit long. The Unprecedented, Never Repeated, Blessing, And the answer of 25. Uh, we read Genesis chapter Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, but it was from verse 1 to 18. Uh, today's uh, main service title. Let's go to our main service quickly. Uh, it's the watchman of this age. The watchman well, of this age or for this age. Of this age, I would write it. Why? Uh, because you are called as a watchman. Uh, that's why you have light. Let me just briefly explain to you what is watchman. Watchman is the disciple, right? In other words, it is your identity. Uh, as a disciple, your identity is children of God. That's why you have the light. What light? The light that Christ gave to you. That light has what? It says life. That's why you are the platform. Okay? But the watchman cannot be just wandering around. Right? You gotta watch. You gotta watch over something. That's why there's a need of watchtower. Or uh, in Spanish translation, it also uh, translates as a strong tower. A tower. You can just think as a tower, strong tower. And it says, Our strong tower is who? Jehovah God. He says like that. And in the watchtower, there's always, uh, we call this like a light. And if you unite these two things, this becomes what? A lighthouse. Okay? So if you put the watchman in the watchtower, which has the light, it becomes the lighthouse, then you are shining the light to the field as a disciple. So what is broken down? The evil forces of darkness. The evil spirits are broken down. Why? Because the light as a lighthouse is shining in the field. That's why you're the watchman of this age. First of all, because you're a disciple and your identity children of God. So that's why we only need to preach proclaim, and pray within the gospel. That's why in the first point, it said you must be able to give answers to the field. Just going to briefly be able to give answers to the field. Can you give answers to the field right now, at this moment? If someone asks you about A or B or C problem, can you give an answer for that? Are we talking about answers that requires scientific reasons? 
or are we, are we asking an answer that requires mathematical reasons? No. You must see the field correctly. That's why you must first know that this problem of this current world, the problem of this age, actually was a problem from long ages before. When did this problem start and existed? You know that. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Chaos, darkness, void, emptiness. So Satan was already before this earth was created, before human being was created. This is the problem of this world. Okay, Satan actually is the problem. Darkness is the problem. So you, got, you need to quickly understand that you must prepare your remnants to fight and have victory over what? Over this problem. Not from money problem, success problem, knowledge problem, medical problem. If you have this first, then you understand what is the fundamental problems. What are the fundamental problems? Easy. Center myself, me, me center. Second, materialistic center. And last one, success center. In other words, it's Genesis chapter 3, chapter 6, and chapter 11. This is the fundamental problem. We are having a walk of faith without knowing, but centering this. Why do I need to have answers? Because I need to be better than others. Why do I need to have success? Because I want to have a more comfortable life, even though I have the gospel. That's not wrong. It's a need, right? It's something that we need, but it becomes what? Self-centered. If it becomes your center, or we call this your standards, then problem starts to start. It starts to become your standard, your gospel, in other words. This becomes your gospel. Now, how dangerous is this? If you cannot really understand this, our remnants will live with this without knowing that they're perishing. And whose fault is this? Actually, it's our fault. Because we want our kids to be successful. We want our kids to be smart because of them. Yes, but because of me, actually. That's why. But there, I think when, when we start debating about it, then parents start to say, it's not, no, it's not for me, actually. It's for him, actually, right? Or for her. And we can debate this for many, many hours. But it, just look at it deeply. Am I having a walk of faith center on this? Then you are teaching your kids for this. That's why you need to understand where the problem came from, from the beginning. And the third thing, this problem has been for many, many years. For many, many, in other words, before years existed, it existed before we were created. For a long time. It didn't appear yesterday. The problem that our Phil is suffering did not appear because yesterday they lied. Because yesterday they did something bad. It actually was a long time ago, and now it's visible. So in other words, what is invisible brings to the visible things. So that's why the invisible things are everything. If you go to a room and there's no, there's no fan, there's no air, you cannot see, right? 
But the more you breathe and there's no new air coming in to the room, what's going to happen? A visible problem will come. What happens? The, pers- the people that are inside that room start to faint, start to lose consciousness. You need to understand. The problem that you're looking right now at the field, the problems that are rising in the field actually are the invisible things, unseen to our eyes. And that we call spiritual problems. You need to quickly catch this in your field. If you cannot see this, then you will start just complaining and also criticizing always the church, always the pastor, always that, 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 never ending, never ending. And because of that, many problems has been there. That's why it goes and is within our lineage, deeply in our family line. Very deeply. And from that family line, it goes to what? To that person. Right? Uh, So my son is about seven months, right? And, you know, I see him. And I see the characteristic of him, his personal traits, right? And just physically, you can understand that, ah, he's my son. She's my daughter, right? Physically. But spiritually, it's the same thing. It's not visible, but at the end of the day, it's shown. But from that family line with the gospel, you need to finish that spiritual problem. You need to believe that in the beginning. It already had been finished. Galatians chapter 2.20. That problem you had from long ages ago, the real problem that you're suffering, had been finished through Christ. He said, you were being Together, crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but who lives in me? Christ lives in me. So you need to proclaim to yourself. So personally, people are suffering because now this problem has been deeply rooted in them. So deeply rooted that it had become their nature. More than nature, it had become that person that we cannot understand. How can that person be like that? Deeply rooted nature and like that. You're looking every day, this, every day. Just go to the field. If you cannot believe in God's sovereignty, or if you cannot believe in God's absolute govern, govern, sovereign, I always say, go, go, go and just visit the hospitals. And you will see, ah, oh, people are dying every day without knowing the gospel. I always recommend uh, evangelists Visit the hospital. I know Korea has a different system, right? Now you cannot go in, whatever, because of corona. But I'm not just saying go to hospital. Look at the field. Just open your eyes and see the field. They're dying every day. You don't need to specify or talk about specific field to understand that this field is actually dying. That's why the sixth point Because God knew this in advance. That's why he prepared what? The answers. Long ages before. What answer he prepared? He prepared the gospel for us. Romans chapter 16, 25 to 27. And what he prepared, he fulfilled Right? How can you prepare and not fulfill it if you have prepared it? Our Father God planned salvation, and Father the Son, uh, God the, the Son, came to fulfill this to us, becoming our sacrifice. And now the God, the Holy Spirit, is continuously fulfilling this salvation through His sons, children of God, in other words. As what? As a watchman. 
So you need to always incorporate what? Triune God. As I told you, triune God is not about understanding Him. It's about believing in Him, having faith through, uh, to Him. Eight. That's why every day, always, you must proclaim the gospel. Have you ever met atheist? They don't believe in God, right? They don't believe in God actually. It's a religion for them. Whenever you meet them, you always preach the gospel to them, right? And they don't listen. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. But one day, you don't know if God's going to open the heart of that person. But that day you say, oh, he's, gonna, he's not going to believe. I'm just going to talk about mixed gospel, good deeds. Then that opportunity is what? Lost. It says, there's so many things we can sow, but there's no one to sow the land. There's so much in need in the field, but nobody's actually proclaiming the gospel because it's not always. I'm telling you, always Christ is Christ. Always gospel is Christ. Jesus died for us. It's always for us. That You need to understand, not just everyday Christmas in Christmas only. Okay, Christmas, Christ is always in us, always guiding us. This is the key. That's why in the second point, then uh, you must see and f uh, show through your life what God is fulfilling. Is fulfilling. Is this hard? Yes, because I want to do it. It will come to a point that you understand, ah, I did not do anything, but God is working. Have you ever, ever, ever experienced this in your walk of faith? If you have never, never experienced this in your walk of faith, you need to come back here. You, you're not looking at the field. You're not looking at the problem correctly, actually. Because you need to see the correct problem to have the correct answer in order to give the right answer in the, within the gospel. How can you say Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, if you don't know the real problem? In other words, it's just something memorized in your head. It, it's not yours, actually. That's why. Show what God is fulfilling. What does actually mean? First point. Prayer is key. It says, through prayer, the Holy Spirit works. The only way to see what God is fulfilling and show what, how God is fulfilling the work is through prayer. Because you must see how He's doing it. And you must believe that He's doing it. And the only way to really believe in this is through prayer. Because you're actually communicating with God every day. Let's say if I don't communicate with Him for about five years... Then for five years, I don't know what happened to him. Then when I meet him after five years, I don't know what to say to him. I would talk about the things I knew about him five, six years ago. Do you understand? So I'm outdated. So if I'm outdated, how am I able to really help him and really believe in him? Do you understand? You must have prayer continuously with God in order to do what? To believe that he's working now at this moment. That's why uh, continuously we're looking at what? The prayer of 393. Uh, do not complicate, as I always tell you. Three, try on God. Nine, the nine things that will be set on you, which are inside the throne of God and are blessings and will give you answers to three ages. And that one of them is what? The unprecedented, never repeated answers. Okay? You must pray with this. In other words, pray with the content of the gospel for God's sake. In other words, you don't need to pray like, God, give me health 
Of course, I do pray for that because I always suffer by health. But you need to pray with this. I was I was just looking at um, some researchers, and because Pastor Ryu, you know, uh, he he kind of commented about the critical comments, Bible commentaries about Lydia and the Romans 16. So I was just looking and and I was looking at Paul's life and Paul missionaries. You know, he always pray about also his health, right? One time, very deeply, three times he went to third heaven and all that. But at the end of the day. Uh, he concluded that, ah, in my weakness, Christ is exalted, in other words. So I was asking myself, so why always God gives this little, um, how you call this, thorns? And he says it was given by Satan, right? To keep him humble, he says like that. Why God always put this kind of people, person, to this evangelist. And when you start to think about it, it makes sense. Why God put that person next to that person? Even in the worldly world, the worldly things, powerful people, just look at the internet. The right hand of the powerful people. It comes out in the names. So let's say like Putin, right hand. Napoleon, right hand. Do whatever powerful people, right hand, who was them? There's a list of them. All of them, almost 99% betrayed those powerful people. Right? Even the worldly things. But nowadays, what is very hot in Netflix? JMS. Right? You know JMS? So Myung Sung? Have you watched it? You watched it? No? It's crazy. I, I didn't watch it because we studied that in, in the seminary. Who, who is this guy? Just listening, just one sentence, you know you're cra- he's crazy, right? But who betrayed him? The right hand, always. People that are close. That's why I was wondering why God always keep us humble in anything that we do with any a thorn that Satan gives. Because he wants us to be what? Only in front of God. And I think uh, it's, it hurts. It's very uncomfortable. But at the end of the day, it leads you to what? To God. That's why all the evangelists of these ages that we see, they all had one disease, right? One peculiar disease. But I'm not saying you must be sick, okay? Don't be sick. The remnants, don't be sick. Five powers be upon you. We, we only, the evangelist is like four powers only. Health, away. <laughs> but I feel like why God always also takes evangelists quickly. You know, no, there's not much, very, a lot of evangelists that live for a long time. Paul did not live very long time. You know why? Because at the end of the day, you must not live behind men. You must live behind what? Gospel. That's why Paul said, I must go to Rome. I must die, in other words. But th- that confession did not come because he was very brave. God told him, you must stand before Caesar, before that trial. God utilized Paul's confession at the end of the day when he was shaking the fear of death. That's why he died. In other words, he martyred. You must leave behind only the gospel. This crazy guy left behind what? Himself. He's still alive. When he dies, he will still be a big influence. Actually, even though the Netflix came out like that, he still has a lot of disciples of him, believing in him, going to his church. And also, in Tegu, SGI, Namgyo Hore Gyeongkyo. So many SGI buildings in the best place in Tegu. Shincheonji, Church of Mo- uh, Mother's Church. 
so many heresies in this world. But all of those are centered on what? Man. That's why what I just mentioned in here is everything. What we'll leave behind in our remnants will be the conclusion of that covenant at the, at the end of the day in that age. That's why always you must proclaim only the gospel. That's why it says uh, you must pray believing. It says pray believing that answers will be given to you. Even though it doesn't come, you must believe the answers will come. Uh, Friday, no, two days ago, uh, we went to a funeral. And one of our church members, he passed away in a very early age. You know, when someone passed away in a very early age, it's very hard to give comforting words, even though it's message, right? How can you give a comforting words to someone that passed away so early? But um, our head pastor was given the message, and he was given the the Bible scripture about Job, right? And Job, his sons and daughters were taken in one day. All his territories, all, all his belongings was taken away from one day to another. But he did not choose to have unbelief, he said like that. Uh, but Job confessed, I came as a naked body, uh, as a, not, a nothing, right? And I'm going back to the Lord with nothing. Just as a memum, you know, there was nothing. You must leave behind only the gospel. Even though you live long or short, it doesn't matter. You must leave behind the gospel. Only. Why? For concluding, this main service of our uh, is Psalms chapter. Let me write it here. Hundred twenty seven, verse one to two. At the end of the day, the watchman will receive all the blessings. What blessings will we receive? It says, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it in labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives for his beloved sleep. In other words, if the Lord does not watch over the city, even the watchman is there, it is in vain. Do you understand? Even though the Lord builds a house, uh, even though those who built his, their house, but the Lord didn't build that house, at the end of the day, that house is in vain. So that, everything, concludes in what? Upon that rock, I will build my church. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. Your life must be built upon what? Upon the confession that you first had today. When you receive Christ as your Savior. That's your rock. From then, you will see that the Lord will watch over the city. And you are now the watchman within Him, in, it, in Him. So in, in other words, don't try to show something to God after making something. Be satisfied in Christ. Be complete in Christ. Be perfect in Christ. Everything is in Christ. That's what we call upon the rock. You're upon the rock. Okay? That's why. Quickly, let's go to our EM message. So unprecedented answers and very repeated blessings. First of all, there's no one like you in this world. Your DNA is different from anyone. Now people are copying the same DNA, but I think it's not going to be the same person at the end of the day, right? Even, even twins, they look almost similar, but they have different DNA. You understand? So all of you are different. That's why the answers that you will receive are unprecedented and never repeated. Why? Because your salvation was unique. It's only one salvation for you. 
In other words, there was not a lot of mylas to save God. God only needed to save you because there's one mylas only. You understand? So that's why your first of all answers are ready. You are never repeated answers. But now you need to understand what are the blessings. First of all, to understand these unprecedented, never repeated blessings, first of all, you need to understand what the three organizations are doing. The three organizations are doing a couple of things. Lately, within my friends, more and more Masons are arising. Uh, before, I had two friends are Masons. But now, I see on Facebook, and one, one of my friends is another Mason. Another friend is another Mason. So what are these three organizations doing? You know, Masons, Freemasons, the New Agers, and also the uh, Jewish organizations. The first thing they do is they all have this secular meditation. It could be Qi movement, yoga, transcendental meditation, uh, somehow um, the Jewish, they have the only the, the way to really concentrate. They, uh, they, they say and they repeat and they memorize. All, they all have these secular meditations, right? Second, they all have their own prayer. But what happened to the Christians? What happened to us? Do we have prayer? Yes, 393. When, you, when someone asks you, what do you pray? What do you say? When Islam, you ask them, how do you pray? They always say, I pray to what? Allah. Like that. Right away. To the only God. Only God. When someone asks you, what do you pray? What do you answer? 393. Okay, that's why we are making this movement. You need to understand. To fight against what? This. Every word that is falling and being fulfilled is to fight against what? The side effects the three organization will bring at the end of the day. They're bringing a big side effect spiritually with their secular movement, meditation movement, and prayer. So how are you going to fight against them if you don't know what to say? In other words, how can you defend with your faith if you don't know what to say? Right? Of course, God will work in your life and you don't need to say anything. They will understand, right? Like Samuel and Daniel, all the seven remnants. But there will be a time that the remnants will be able to confess at that moment in front of the kings. And that will shine the light to the kings and the 237 nations. And that we call word evangelization, right? 393. What do you pray? 393. What is 393? You explain. I pray with this. I pray with that. I pray for that. And people say, oh, are you Christian? Yes, I'm Christian. Never heard about that. Really, go anywhere, any, any, any Christian, and ask them, what do you pray? I pray for my health, success, and so my, so my friends and my sons be healthy. That's the only prayer they have. But the secular and three organization are what they're doing what? Prayer that connects with what? The spiritual world. And that we call Nephilim. Not with God, but with Nephilim. In other words, with Satan. That's why if someone asks you, how do you meditate? I meditate in the morning. But first of all, you need to do it. <laughs> right? At least make it believable. Believable, okay? At least try it two or three times so you can say it once. You can never say something you've never have tried in your life. Your morning meditation, pray and join the triune God. Your daytime meditation, how are you going to meditate daytime? Hold on to the word, pray, and find meaning in everything. This is not Buddhism, okay? This was given from the beginning within the pilgrims of Christianity. It was taken away from us. You need to understand that. Just look at the history. It was taken away from us. Everything was taken away from us, but we we're just like dumb doing nothing, actually. We think that, oh, Islam, they pray always. 
We used to pray more than five times every day. Just look at the early church. Every day in the house, in the church, every day in the Mark support upper rooms. You need to understand it was taken away from us. Don't say that it was their prayer. You need to, I really need to uh, take this. And night meditation, you need to bring your day to a close with what? Important answers. In other words, you must be able to be thankful at night. Yesterday, I was, ha- I was, I was having a hard time sleeping. And then I started to ask God, you know, many things. And at the end of the day, you know, you can't ask anything to God, you know. In very stressful moments, you can ask God, I'm just laying down, God, you know, this thing and this, that, and everything. Because the missions conference is coming soon, right? So many things are happening in the field of the missions. I would like to share to you, but actually in Tarapang missions field, and with the corona, we're not away from crisis also. You know, all the Christian communities of missions field, they have called all the missionaries back. Do you understand? So Hapdong, which is our Korean uh, denomination, the biggest denomination in Korea, they have um, commissioned many missionaries. But you know how many people they came back within the missionaries? Many. Even the baptism, which the Baptist uh, denominations, missionaries, they're so big. They have everywhere. Even Daniel is not here, but even his grandfather, he's uh, working in the Philippines. Within the Baptist denomination as a missionary. But Daniel told me that after a couple of years, he's going to retire and go back to the States. But within Corona, many missionaries were called back. Many. So what about Tarakpan then, our missionaries? What do you think? Are we okay? Or everything is okay? So that kind of prayer, you know, I'm very close to the mission sphere. Right? My, you know, my, my parents are over there. But it's not, I'm not saying my parents are there. I'm saying overall, all the missionaries, I know them. So there's a lot of voices coming, a lot of, th- a lot of things coming. So all of those pressure and stress, I call it stress because it's stressful. I'm human, right? You know, when blood comes high, it's stress, okay? That's what we call stress. And then there's spiritual stress. Spiritual stress brings you to depression. That's why there's a big book called Spiritual Depression. It's a very hard book, but I read it. Someone gave it to me. I read it and learned a lot of stuff. And then when then this spiritual depression comes, then you start to ask God many things. You start to pray to God. Why are you allowing this time to me? But the remnants don't know. But to me, which I am the future uh, generation for pastoral ministry or missions. The hardest thing in the world, the job, is being pastor, actually. You understand? You think doctor is hard? Pastor is harder, okay? Being missionary is harder. Why? You can never say what you want us to do. Actually. Actually. In your deep part, you can never say anything. That's the hardest job you can have in your life. So asking all of those questions, the spirit, all the stress, uh, at the end, you know, God gave me a comfort. He gave me, first of all, silence. What silence? My thoughts stopped. Okay? He didn't give me, I am Jehovah God, your God. I'll be with you, Emmanuel. He did not say that to me. I did not hear him. But what happened? You know, I pray, pray, and, and you know, stopped. Every thought stopped. And then fell asleep. You understand? So I'm, just, I'm, I'm saying, everything you're going through, take it to prayer. Put meaning. Think and Pray. But at the end of the day, your thoughts must stop. And that's the conclusion of prayer. Because when your thought, when your thoughts stop, then you can give thanks to God. So when I wake up, the first thing I remember is what he did for me at that night. That's why concluding your night is everything. Because that's your next morning. 
That's your next step, what you have, and you will take it to the next day. That's why the unprecedented answers will come to you, will arise in you. Quickly, let's look at Genesis chapter 39, 1 to 6. Joseph, at the end of the day, he had the answers that nobody had. No one can repeat it. He was in front of Pharaoh, and he shared and he proclaimed the gospel to him. Not like Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, God will give you the answer according to your benefit. And what happened? Pharaoh raised him as a witness. And then Joseph saved all nations within them. That's evangelization. That's unprecedented answers. I'm not saying, remnants, go find a job that nobody does. That's a very hard thing. Because everybody has a job now. Everybody is good at anything. It's not finding something that nobody's doing, actually. Like I always say, nobody, nothing, and everybody. You need to find the unprecedented answers. Just look at what? Exodus chapter 3, 1 to 12 to 46. Moses. He said, I cannot do it. But God showed his mercy. God showed his command. And God showed him mission to him. And he saved what? Israel. Nobody can do it. Even, these, even Jewish still, they, they worship Moses. It's like the second God for him, for them. To that point, they had unprecedented answer. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. Joshua, he was given the covenant to him again, but he was shaken. But God said to him, what? Do not be shaken. I'll be with you as I was with Moses. And he defeated what? Jericho, Amorites, and he conquered Canaan at the end of the day. Anyone had this answer? No, only Joshua had this answer. Fourth, 1 Samuel chapter 3, 1 to, 9, uh, 1 to 19. No one wanted to be the, next to the Ark of the Covenant, next to Eli, the prophet that was blinded spiritually. Hannah sent him. And that was the beginning of what? The, the Mismah movement. What's the Mismah movement? It is not their, it's not the problem of the Gentiles. It's our problem. Let's get rid of the idols and let's go back to the Lord. That's what we call Mismah movement. 1 Samuel 17. 1 to 47. Who is this? David. You know him. You have heard of him about him. He defeated who? Goliath. That's the answers that never repeated and will never exist. But our remnants will receive answers also like this. And now you must receive the unprecedented, never repeated answers inside the church. Quickly just giving you the answers for you. Prepare. Three courtyards. Today we heard it, right? Your direction of your prayer is to actually fulfill and have the blessing of three courtyards. First courtyard is the courtyards of the kids. The courtyard of prayer. And the courtyard of uh, Gentiles. The kids is what? The remnants, we must raise them as a summit. Prayer is healing. And the courtyard of the Gentiles, 237, summit, uh, missions. This is the three courtyards that you must have within the answers of the unprecedented answers and never repeated. If we cannot prepare this, then the three organizations will take everything away from us. I told you in, yes, uh, last week in Hawaii, there's um, Polynesia. Have you researched about it? Research is huge. They bought a land, huge. They have a center, huge. Everybody devoting themselves, huge. You go there, you want to become Mormon. You understand? When people come to our church, they want to become Christian. That's be normal. But that's not happening, actually. 
But I, thankfully, uh, you know, a couple of times Latin American came to our worship, right? Thankfully, they are uh, they were not they're a couple of them they're not Christian, a couple of them they're Christian. But thankfully, all of them have said, "Wow, this church is I feel happy. I want to be a church member." That's normal. But Mormon are another level. You go there, you want to become Mormon. I don't care about being Christian anymore. Let's be Mormon. Why? Everything is there. Why? They have this system. They have all the system to take care of your kid. All the heresy have the system to take care of your kid. That's why in Korea, all the moms are waiting until my kid is three years old or two years old, right? To send him to what? To what? To Orinjin. Uh, I mean, my, my, my wife and me, are we talking about it. I'm like, huh? Do we send them to three or two? I don't know. There's a lot of debate, right? But this is the system. And the heresies are taking all of the system. But our church... We are receiving this answer now. That's why you must pray for this. All the young adults, uh, you must pray for this. Uh, I know it's, it might be a pressure to make a program and be with them and, you know, uh, giving your energy to them. And, you know, it's hard. I know it's hard, you know. When I come to 237 summer school, you know, the kids are screaming around and running around. You're like, ah, shut up, you know that. And you're chasing them, and you come back, and, they, and all the moms are running away everywhere. But it's tiring. It is tiring. But it is the future. What do you want to do then? Because it's tiring, I'm not going to do it. It's the future. But the young adults have this key to really raise our future generation to the summit. Adults, we can have a, a limit but young adults, very different. You have an active feel right now, young adults. And the remnants needs feel. You understand? That's why I was, when our summer school team went to Kitsania, I was like, why we don't have that like that? We have all the expertise, all the people that have this kind of job, but we never have this. In our church. Why? We have so much source. We have so much things that we can do internship. But why nobody wants to do it? That was my question, right? So I asked one elder, and he said, they never ask us. I was like, what? Okay, let's do it then. And he said, okay, let's do it. Yes, let's do it. So one time I brought a remnant to, to this elder, and he, he doesn't know what to do. Ah, there's the key. There's the key. There's need of form. So now we're, um, I'm preparing that field. Really preparing that field. Because elders, they tell me, because I'm praying, I'm, I'm in charge of RTC. So we have a meeting, right? So all the elders tell me, we don't know how to reach or talk to the remnants. In other words, they're afraid to meet you. And you are scared to meet them. You understand? Why are you afraid to meet an old people, old person? Why? Konde mo, latte mo. It's your loss then. Mo konde go, mo latte go. Kaso peon nige usun sunichi. Ige to konde. Kuchu, kuchu. Ige to konde ji kuchu. Right? But I like to be konde. Why? Because I love my remnants, and I want my remnants to learn from the elders, from the church officers. Someone needs to make a sacrifice to be conde, right? So that's why elders don't know how to reach our remnants. That's why assistant pastor and co-pastors are the middle to make that connection, make that breach. But sadly, nobody's doing it. I don't know why. Let's see. That's why the conclusion is 
uh, there's no need to compete. There's no need to fight. There's no need to convince. Oh, convince. Because what? Because you have already unprecedented, never repeated blessings. That's the conclusion. That's why young adults and also the moms are here, remnants are here, and also our remnants from the states, United States here are here. Think about this. You have a job, you have a major, anything, connect anything with this three courtyard. You don't need to do this all at once. Just pick one. Okay? Just pick one. The easiest one is what? The Gentiles, actually. The Gentiles are knee, they're crying, and they're dying every day in the field. Lately, the Gentiles, the foreigners in the Korea, they're afraid of being caught. Because they don't know when they're going to be deported again. This Gentiles field is very important. How can you save this field? The young adults have the answer, actually. You understand? The kids, you can play with them. But how can you make them as a summit? As I told you, uh, our remnant, Che Seon, you saw it in Hanagyue uh, Sotongbang, right? She's, I, said, I told her, send me the video, you know. Why you don't send me the video? And she said, I used to meet you, Seoni, and Chimin when they were Chodongseng, right? Every day. Uh, every Sunday, we talked a lot. Uh, but the key point of what Seon uh, was given as an interview is 편집, edit. Edit, 편집을 잘해. Understand? That's why she's challenging towards what 학원. But that's the key also for this and also this. Our remnants must be able to edit well in order to make this content them for themselves. 학원은 다 해줘. 편집을 다 해주고 외워. Okay? But when they go outside the world, which is actually the real thing, they don't know how to make it. That's why there's no creativity. There's no new things, improvements. We're always joking about MZ, Z, uh, MZ people. They're like robots, right? But it's not because of that. It's because they're not able to edit. Just take your remnant and really work to edit. And I always saw these three kids. One day I will see you in, in the news again. I don't know. I'm joking, but all of these kids I met, they have so much potential. But nobody is actually knowing that. But I try to not be upon like in them because, you know. They have their own departments. They have union boo. They have chodun boo. They have all that. That's why I don't touch you. You understand? But you have so much potential. And the church must prepare that. And the best key is what? The young adults. Okay? Let's pray. God, thank you for giving us the answer today. Let us really be raised as a watchman for this age so we can really enjoy the blessing of the light that will be shined to 237 nations and receive the unprecedented, never-repeated answers. Also, God, keep us within your word and give us the feeling of the Holy Spirit so we can see what you fulfill and you feel and also what we see, how you're fulfilling everything in advance. Thank you, God, and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you very much. A couple of announcements I have. Um, I will not be going to Japan because my visa did not come out. Uh, but our Konsanim uh, and all, all, all other members of our church will be mm, attending uh, the conference only, not a leaders retreat of Japan. So I hope you pray for that. And also uh, for April, 
after one week, there's a flight and conference in Germany. Uh, the ticketing is being still uh, being worked, so we don't know what day or what time. And also, the third week of April, uh, from 19, there's a conference for missionaries. It said, I saw the news that it said that you can go for the conference, missions conference, but the, the registration fee is $100, 100,000 won. Pretty expensive, but 100,000 won. I don't know if our church is going to prepare a bus. I don't know, but I hope that you keep out, updated in the news and also the, the booklet of our church. So after that, uh, after we have the missions uh, festival in our church, which is the 23, then after that we have um, the Latin Americans 40 days intensive training, which is from 24 actually to May 19. So within that month, I'll be serving and I'll be interpreting for, there's only one interpreter. Anyone wants to be Spanish interpreter? You want to be? Please, please, God, send me one Spanish. No Spanish interpreter, just, just me. So I hope that I don't die, okay? <laughs> Sometimes I wish I die, but I hope I don't die. And uh, I hope that um, within the 50, maybe 50 people, he said. But I don't know how many people will come. Right now, on my list, I only have like uh, 35. Uh, I'm still praying. We're still looking at the airplane tickets still there's a couple of missionaries that have not bought the tickets and we're still looking at that and we're still uh, updating that and after that uh, on may you know all the trainings will come back again so i hope that you keep yourself in the stream and as you know our our church is being used greatly and thankful in our conferences and missions conference this time so i hope you pray for the team and thank you very much